All right then, welcome back to another episode of the Tempest Rising podcast. This is episode 62 and for the next couple of weeks we're going to do something slightly different. Um, We're going to take a little look at a few of my favourite tools for optimising wellness. So I'm going to share with you a few different things that I use every day to think, feel and do better as a human being so that I can do more and just live a little bit better. Now, you've probably heard of the phrase biohacking before because it's become a bit of a thing in recent years, particularly with the release of bulletproof coffee and that kind of um, range of products. So it's largely been popularized by uh, Dave Asprey, who's the guy that created the bulletproof coffee um you've got ben greenfield he's um massively into the biohacking so if you follow those kinds of people or if you're into wellness fitness health nutrition any of those kinds of things you should have heard of it but it's essentially the practice of optimizing your biology so that you can be a better human so it's a massive broad topic and it covers all kinds of different areas but it's essentially small incremental improvements across the board so that you can do better you know live better it might be anti-aging it might be nutrition it might be fitness sleep recovery you know it's a whole broad spectrum of topics but most people will kind of hone in on those few so food fitness sleep and then recovery and then go from there for me personally I like to keep it simple and stick with the things that I know have scientific backing and have been proven to work but a lot of people start going down the biohacking route um, and you know you can go as far down the rabbit hole as you want and it can be very expensive um particularly for things that kind of offer a very negligible effect, um, you know, very small edge that most people who just want to live a bit better don't really need. You can see things like earthing mats, um, there's home saunas, float tanks, water filtration systems, vibration plates, um, all kinds of fancy fitness equipment. There's just so many different products out there that cost the earth but in reality you can live optimally and you can invest in some biohacking equipment without having to go down that route without having to go to the extreme and you can get a similar effect with cheaper options or natural options so if you are interested in human optimization and biohacking just be mindful and don't get drawn into all the fancy stuff and don't end up going down a rabbit hole it's best to figure out what needs improving in your world and within your own wellness and your own body and then look at those areas in particular and go from there for me it started with sleep wanting to improve my sleep because it's something that's never been as good as it could be and it led me to buying an aura ring so this right here it's coming up for probably two years ago um I remember purchasing it and having to wait around two to three months for it to arrive because it was a pretty new product at the time and they had limited numbers and they were building them and shipping them and all that kind of stuff. And it was extremely expensive, but it was worth it. I think they're at the moment they're around about $299. Um, so they are expensive, but it's absolutely worth it. And I would buy it again because I'm not a fan of the wrist trackers. And I think that a lot of the data you get from your um, wrist kind of trackers are very inaccurate. And I personally don't like having stuff around my wrist if I'm training or sleeping. So I looked at the ring as an option, something that would be very much wearable for me and it wouldn't get in the way. I don't mind wearing rings. I always wear rings. I always have done. So it wouldn't be something that I'd feel I have to take off all the time. And I started researching and it led me to the Aura Ring. So when you get your Aura Ring, it comes in a nice fancy box like that. You have the ring itself, which when you first place your order and you pay for it, they send you a ring sizing kit. So it's a fancy box with a series of different ring sizes in. You try them on and you establish which size is better for you. And then you go update your order with your ring size and then they build it and ship it. You get your little charger. So it's a USB charger. Um, This also works for resetting when you have to update your firmware and your software and stuff, you you have to use the charger. So it's, it's nice and tidy, very small. 
Um, and the ring itself, they have different colors and two different styles. You could choose the style that works for you. And it's actually really robust. I was worried about scratching it, um, damaging it, denting it. And I've had this nearly two years and it's virtually brand new. Um, I was even worried about all the, the hand sanitizer and the amount of stuff we're having to use at the moment, like wearing away the finish, but it's, it's not done anything to it. So I've been very, very impressed with the build quality. I have dropped it. Um, it, I've worn it in the shower. Actually, to be fair, I wear it in the shower pretty much all the time. It's not very often I take it off. Obviously, I take it off to dry it if I wash my hands or have a shower. But it's it's proving to be very much indestructible, which is incredible because of the technology that's actually inside of it. It works on um, different sensors. Um, you have a PPG sensor, which tracks the heart rate. You have um, an NTC sensor, which does body temperature. And you also have a 3D accelerometer, which does your steps and your movement based things. Um, you can also add workouts manually. So if you're doing like a gym based workout or yoga or something like that, where you're not actually stepping, you can track that in there. If you're doing some kind of lifting um, and you have to take it off, you can put that in there. You can also sync it up to um, Apple Fit. And I think it works with Google Fit as well so that you can import data from other apps. So it gives a complete picture of everything. It tracks a whole lot of stuff. So in terms of tracking, it's pitched as primarily a sleep tracker. Um, so within your sleep, it will tell you your optimized bedtime. It will tell you how much deep sleep you get. It will tell you your REM sleep, how efficient your sleeping is. It will give you a score. It will show you a breakdown of the sleep stages, how long you're in bed for, how much time you actually slept for. It will tell you your own optimized wake up time. Um, it also tracks how much you've moved during the night. So loads and loads of sleep data. Um, then it will also go into your body temperature um, and your heart rate variability, plus your respiratory rate and your resting heart rate, which are all signs of your wellness, which it then assigns you a readiness score based on um, kind of your physical readiness for the day. So if the score is really high, you can go out, train hard, do a lot. If the score comes down, you need, know you need to back off a little bit and focus on recovery. It tracks your activity. So as I said, you can update your workouts. It will track your steps, how many calories you've burnt. Um, it will give you an activity score. So if you sit down a lot, it will give you an alert that you've been sitting too much and it drops your activity score down. It will give you a walking equivalency. It will give you um, a total calorie burn, total number of steps. So it gives you loads and loads of data. And it's really useful, important data um, particularly if you're interested in living better and feeling better. So one of the most powerful stats that I have really enjoyed tracking is the heart rate variability. So your heart rate variability is linked to your nervous systems. And it's basically a measure of um, how well your systems are doing. So you have two systems, your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous systems, and they go up and down like this. One is your resting system. It's the one that we go into when we are resting and recovering. And one is your fight or flight. So the one that gets activated when you need to react. If we can learn to balance these two systems and we can sit more in between, then we're in a great position to deal with stress and to regulate our body and to you know, improve our physiology and work as an optimal human being. But if we spend too much time in one system or another, we get very much out of balance. So your heart rate variability is a great way of kind of assessing the balance between those systems and understanding how that impacts your heart and then your body at large. So the actual heart rate variability measures the space between your heartbeats. And it's quite a, a tough thing to get your head around. It's something that we talk about quite a lot within um, the Project Tempest programs, in particular, the Freedom from Chaos programs, where we talk about heart coherence um, and stuff like that. But essentially, we all have a resting heart rate. So the number of beats that our heart performs within a minute, the space between those heart beats can vary. It's not the same. It's not uniform every time it will vary. And the more incoherent and scatty that space between your heart rate is, the more out of whack you are. The closer we can get to a uniform 
gap in between each beat, the more balanced our system is. So I know when I see my heart rate variability drop, my body is stressed, my systems are all out of whack and I need to start recovering. I need to get a bit more coherent. Prior to lockdown, my heart rate variability was averaging about 35, which is ridiculously low. Now it's consistently in the 50s because I was training more, I was focusing more and I was taking care of myself better because I had to. So it does show a massive difference. Um, as well as obviously taking all of this data into account, it will give you daily insight. So it will set you a calorie goal for the day and an insight based on what you actually need from your heart rate variability, your sleep and all your other stats. And I'll try to adhere to that every day. It's not always possible, but because I can track this data and see the trends, I can figure out when I'm going to get ill, when I can push more, when I need to scale back and, and what I need to do that day to, to be where I'm at based on my physiology. The, the heart rate data and the temperature stuff even shows me when I've been eating foods that I'm allergic to and have created an allergic response in my body, in my body because I can see it. The following morning, I can see that my heart rate took too long to come down. I can see that my temperature went up. I can see that my breathing rate was up. And all of that has affected my sleep, which has affected everything else. So I can see what I've had for dinner, whether that has affected me. So it's really, really useful. I can see how my emotional state affects my physiology as well. So depending on how things are, we can shift. We can look at shifting our mood. We can look at shifting our food around. We can look at changing our sleep. All of these things. It's really incredible, powerful data to have. So I'm actually going to show you some of the stuff. Let me uh, see if I can get up a little screen share without crashing everything. So obviously you get an app on your phone which is where you track most of your data. So this is the app here. Let me just load it. So this is the app here and you can scroll through your days and track all your data and go in depth for each thing. So readiness, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll be honest, my battery ran out last night so it didn't track much of my sleep data, but we can have a little look at yesterday's data because you can get an online app which um, allows you to log in and see the data from your phone. So. There you go, you should be able to see some data. So but this is for yesterday. So yesterday, I didn't sleep particularly well. I only had five hours and 43 minutes of sleep. Um, but you can see that the sleep stats are actually not so bad. I had a good amount of deep sleep. My sleep was pretty efficient, but I didn't have enough REM sleep or total sleep. And then we can break it down into the sleep stages. We can see my resting heart rate was all over the place. My average heart rate was 64. Usually it's about 52 to 53. My breaths usually are around about 13. So they were up as well. So clearly what I had for dinner on Sunday night created a bit of an effect in my body, which probably prevented me from sleeping well. You can see during the day, my activity was pretty high. I burnt through a lot of calories. So you can go right in depth with all of this stuff and you can get... Um, daily charts, you can get monthly comparisons, all of this stuff. So if I go into readiness, average heart rate variability, you can see here, it's, it's over 50. We can see heart rate, temperature, activity. So activity burn, how many calories you burn as an average. So there's so much data in here how many steps you take, all this kind of stuff, really, really insightful data. And if you understand this data, you can learn to use it to enhance your well-being. Such a powerful tool. And it's far superior to any other typical fitness tracker that I have used or experienced or know of. Uh, know, of know of. So let me know what you currently track, what kind of trackers you use, what your experiences are with them and how that actually helps you. I think a lot of people buy a fitness tracker and they track the data, but they don't really know how to use it or they look at the data and then they don't actively do anything to improve it. Data is merely that it's just data and it means nothing until you actually take an action around that data to improve it. So let me know your thoughts on this. What do you use? What do you track? What would you like to track? 
um yeah and just let me know where you're at next week i'm gonna take a look at light blocking glasses and i'm going to show you some of the different kinds of glasses that i use to uh, mitigate the effects of working on a laptop and how the blue light can affect your sleep so we're going to get into that next week let me know your thoughts on the trackers first though and i will see you all next week have a great day